So I found out that Rocky Mountain is re-releasing their fat bike, the Blizzard. They've made this for a few years, and I'm kind of excited about this particular release. I know you're probably thinking, a fat bike cannot be an exciting release. It's, a fat bike is a fat bike is a fat bike, right? It has fat tires to float on snow. That's it, right? Let's dig in here a little bit. This thing looks awesome. So it comes in aluminum and carbon. I'm most interested in the carbon version. Uh, the, they have a C30 and a C50. And here's the carbon 30 here. So first of all, it is a full carbon frame and fork. Full carbon bikes typically don't suck. The other crazy part about this is the geometry. They've really kind of pushed the boundaries of what other fat bikes have done in the past. It's the only company that has taken the long, low, and slack modern Geo to a fat bike. It also incorporates 27.5 inch wheels and you can run 29 inch plus wheels as well so you can kind of choose your own adventure there. Before this bike, virtually every fat bike was heavy, used outdated geometry, and were very single purpose. So I'm, I've got this coming in, and I think that it could be a game changer. Let's go check it out. The day has come. The bike we've all been waiting for to see how it performs, the Rocky Mountain Blizzard Carbon 30. This bike is beautiful in person. The color is a little bit more red than purple. The website makes it look a little bit more purple, but this is definitely like a beautiful, deep cherry red. Rocky Mountain head badge looks amazing as always. Got some mint petals that don't quite match up. The, the mint is a little bit more green, but that's okay. But I'm really excited to put this through the paces. What an amazing looking bike. So we're at Green Mountain today, and spoiler alert, I've ever, actually already ridden it on Apex, and it was phenomenal. I had a ton of fun up and down. And so we'll do a ride along, and I'll kind of chat through that a little bit. So, spoiler alert, uh, there's no snow on the ground. Unfortunately, I waited for this bike to come in and put my deposit down in January, or uh, actually it was a, yeah, it was early January. Put my deposit down and, uh, you know, with the supply chain, we don't know what the hell's going on out there. We don't know when we're going to get stuff. So I was patient and ended up bringing it down from the mountains just to get some miles on it. So I can already tell this uh, definitely still has quick steering for uh, such a slack head angle. It doesn't feel like it's uh, hard to initiate the turn. I think that'd be the expectation coming from a bike or all fat bikes for that matter are mostly 69 degree head angles. So this being three degrees slacker, I expected it to steer real slow, but just playing around with it here, I can definitely maneuver it pretty quickly. This thing does not feel slow in the least bit. I've ridden a couple fat bikes and I was very thankful to have that little gear, but I am feeling just like a normal bike as far as acceleration and it doesn't feel heavy. Well, it's not heavy. It's came in just over 32 pounds. So it's not really that heavy. That might be partially why. The other reason is because when you have 27.5 inch fat bike wheels, you have effectively a 31 inch diameter. That's huge. So they spin up and they, it feels quick. The fit on this medium with a 450 millimeter reach is spot on. 
I feel very comfortable. Another thing to mention is that this bike actually came on spec, meaning everything on the website, all the parts that said it came with, it did come with. There's not one part on here that's not listed accurately on the website. Speaking of build, um, this doesn't come with a dropper post. The C50 does. I uh, didn't really care about the dropper, um, but if you're gonna be riding it as a trail bike, it'd be a good idea. I haven't really encountered anything in the winter, the snow, that I think you need a dropper for, but again, preaching to the choir, meaning myself, if you're not using a dropper, you're not descending the correct way. So I guess you can just decide if you want one or not. Here we are getting to the top of Box of Rocks. And I gotta tell you, I feel like I flew up that. I've only ridden a handful of fat bikes before. All of them steep head angles and traditional geometry. Here we are on a long raked out fat bike and it's hands down the fastest climber I've ever ridden with a four or more inch tire. Wow, I'm impressed. It feels effortless. And I'm not even running clip-ins, I'm running flat pedals. I mean, there's something intuitive about the way this bike pedals. At the top now, just finishing up to the peak. And that is absolutely the fastest climbing fat bike I've ever ridden. One thing I forgot to mention about the build, as you can see, my handlebars are actually race face carbon. Those don't come on the stock build. That's the only thing I've changed. And that's because the bars were aluminum. They were gorgeous aluminum bars. They looked great. But if I'm gonna run fully rigid, I think I'm gonna try to get as much compliance out of the handlebars as I can, especially since we live in a very bumpy area. Aluminum bars might be fine. I should have tried them, but I had the carbon bars. Might as well use them. Coming up to the top now. I'm gonna get one of the best views in the front range. People say Green Mountain is lame. Some people call it Girlfriend Mountain, but this view up here. I, I, I really enjoy this trail. But look at this. See red rocks over there. Wow, so good. We're going downhill finally. So I've got the, the seat post down just, just so I can review it like I would any other bike. I don't wanna I don't wanna be influenced by no dropper. So I'm just gonna review it with the seat down. Plus I can be a little bit more confident. Wow that that steering really stiffens up in the high speed. That's surprising. It's not as twitchy as it was going slow. <laughs> oh man, this is this is fun. <laughs> oh. Traction for days, right? Definitely don't want to crash to the left. We've got stitches in the left arm right now. have any idea when these tires are going to slip. They probably should never slip, really. It doesn't manual that bad for 455 mil chain space. Wow! Oh my god, this is fun. Oh. Holy cow, this is fun. Oh. I need to lean this bike over further. I'm not trusting it. Oh, it's actually kind of hard to lean the bike over. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so scared of those corners. I don't know why, but... Okay. Starting to force that bike down a little bit. Wow, that's a weird sensation. 
really gotta practice these corners not to slide out. What a blast. Let's see if we can get this thing to play around. These brakes definitely need to be embedded. They do a big long descent and just hammer the brakes. Those seat stains definitely hit my calves. Hey, just me, thank you. Thanks. So wild. Woo! <laughs> Got some air. <laughs> I mean, it plays. I mean, it's not easy to get this thing off the ground, but it, it'll play around if you're going fast enough. This thing absolutely rips. Hey, check out the deer. Hey guys. Just wow. I'm very, very impressed with this bike. What's even more exciting is that imagine if you put 29 inch plus wheels, which this bike is specced to run 29 inch plus with a suspension fork. This might be an amazing bike if you did that. That would just be a whole other level of testing it out. 29 plus with suspension. And it'd probably end up weighing 28 pounds or something. That'd make a crazy cross country race. Stay tuned, maybe I'll do it. <laughs> just a couple disclaimers. Uh, this is my personal bike. I did purchase it. So, might be a little biased. But I think that this really is the most exciting fat bike on the market after riding it. I'm still smiling. I just had so much fun with it. And again, no snow. So, elephant in the room. It's a fat bike. <laughs> You're supposed to ride it in the snow. But, uh, most important thing is fat bike tires float in the snow. So, you know, I'm not really sure how important uh, that really is. So, take it for what it's worth. <laughs> 